think is the yeah this is pretty good um i i you know i, I look reporters have are human beings they have preferences for um for, for candidates. I can understand that. I don't think there's anything bad about that. I think they've got to do their best to be objective. And I think you've got to have a mix of, uh, of reporters so that at the very least, you know, the product you put out at the end of the day has some form of balance, right? I mean, we're not a news organization here. We, t you know, we aggregate the news and I'm a news reader, uh, but we, we're pretty upfront with, <clears throat> with, you know, who we support. Um, and I think, you know, you could get away with doing that, too. I mean, it's quite apparent that um, they don't have any uh, Sanders supporters at MSNBC. I think I might be the only paid contributor who I think is, like, clearly uh, a supporter of Sanders or even maybe, like, even, you know, I, I think they may have maybe some people who come on who are supporters of, of Warren. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. But um, here is a report. And I, I'm not sure who it is. Um, Chris Jansen. Uh, she's a perfectly nice person. I, I, I've, I, I've, I've met her uh, there. She seemed perfectly nice. Um, she is on the ground in a Nevada caucus and <laughs> reporting on, um, and, and Bernie Sanders won Latino voters by 51%. He, that's how much he won by. She's at a caucus, and um, apparently either Chris Jansen wanted someone else to win the Latino support or is just exhausted at reporting about Latinos. Largely people of color, of those the majority are Latino, and they are clearly, at least from eyeballing it, Strongly in favor of Bernie Sanders with Joe Biden coming in second. <sighs> on the one hand, I, I think it's possible she could be exhausted. But on the other hand, isn't it part of your job to know what kind of, you know, spin you're putting on the words that you're saying? I think yeah, you got to have a, a little bit job. more self-awareness to be able to say, like, I mean, maybe you could be tired. But, but at that point, you go like... I'm here at this uh, convent, you know, this uh, thing, caucus, <sighs> and then say, and it's 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 mostly Latinos, and like, they're supporting Bernie Sanders. That was like a Michael mm -hmm. sigh. Yeah, that was a huge <laughs> Michael sigh. That was like maybe somebody said off mic to like hey, Chris, what are you wearing? <sighs> Adidas jacket. Yeah. <sighs> Wasn't there some group that announced their uh, who won and they were mocking that? Do we have that audio of, I mean, this type of freak out, it's consistent with what we've seen and at least she didn't, you know, like mean to editorialize. She didn't say anything racist. Right. I mean, at I least feel like people will start doing that. The more we see people of color voting for Bernie. Right. I mean, at least she didn't go like, oh. I'm not racist. I'm just disappointed. This is gonna make this is gonna make Nevada very hostile to everybody who you know, or something like that, or there could be mass shootings, or you know, something you know, something to that effect. But um, this became a bit of a meme, and some uh, members of a guess it was a a caucus that was announcing or uh, who won <laughs> their caucus uh, decided to turn it into a bit of a joke. And here it comes. It's going to come in in a moment. But this is going across the board. I mean, I, I can tell you that I went out to dinner. Uh, well, here is here is everybody announcing it at uh, this is at a uh, this is uh, some um, uh, caucus and uh, with um, with I think some uh, casino workers because it's being held in a hotel. Here it is. This is and who who's who's texting this out? Who's tweeting it out? Uh, Anila uh, Mieha. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Bernie! Bernie won that one. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, They're funny. But I will, I will tell you this. I have, you know, most of the people I come into contact with, when I go out... You know, unless it's, you know, like good friends. Like when I go out peripherally, right? 
like, you know, a friend of a friend's birthday party or something like that. Or, you know, uh, or people who are like a little bit older than me, you know, where I'm going to like my cousin's, you know, grandparent, that type of thing. These are people who are sort of like very mainstreamy Democrats. They probably in the past have expressed like some concern that Bernie Sanders can't win this and that. Um, not not super hostile, but not, you know, uh, PM, uh, PO, PMOCs or whatever. Um, and the number of those people who have said to me in the past month and a half, two months, what, what's going on with MSNBC? I can't even watch it anymore. It's all Republicans. And, and I'm like, it's been like this for three years. But I think to a certain extent, once impeachment ended, some of this is coming out. And this is a dynamic that I talked about during the Bush administration, where like it was very hard when everybody was against Bush. It was very hard to know that people you you know, were, were your allies were actually their politics are very different. And I think even for these folks who are the prime targets audience for MSNBC, I think there's a lot of people sort of waking up and going like, Hey, wait a second. What? And, um, it's creating a very interesting dynamic. Well, usually that kind of uh, unifying force just leads to the sort of moderate or centrist or whatever you want to call it being on top. But we're at a weird point now where it actually says you get, these guys should fall in line behind Bernie. I mean, it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird because all of a sudden two values are going to come into conflict for a lot of these people, which is Trump is the greatest threat to our democracy in our lifetime. And wait a second. I don't want somebody who's actually on the left to be president. <laughs> and it's going to be interesting to see how they navigate it. It's going to be so good. Um, but I would also say to people, it is very important in my mind. I mean, you look, people do whatever they want. But... I personally will tell you how I'm going to behave in this situation. And part of it is, pull up this clip number 10. Bernie Sanders, it's not over. It is not over. And people should get out there and knock on as many doors as possible. And they should be phone banking. It is not over. He needs to win it outright so they can't pull anything at the convention. There is no doubt in my mind. Jamie is absolutely right. If it is, if Bernie Sanders is up by double digits going in, if it's, you know, he's got 33% of the vote or more, and then his nearest competitor has 23%, no way. I do not believe there is any way in hell, no matter how much money Michael Bloomberg has or whatever, or anybody will get that nomination. A, they'd be an idiot to accept it because they're going to lose. And B, anybody who cares about the Democratic Party would be an idiot to push for something like that because it's going to destroy the Democratic Party. And, and frankly, I just, I believe they're smart enough to not do that. What they would rather do is allow Bernie to lose in the general election. And we, we can talk about that later. But if you want a little example, see Martha Coakley in her run against Scott Brown uh, about eight years ago, 10 years ago. She was from Western Massachusetts. Massachusetts is an old boy network. They basically said, we're going home, guys. Good luck, Martha. And see how that goes. Put that aside. The point is, is that Sanders has, I don't know what the, what the Nate... Uh, Silver would say, but I think probably 80 to 90% chance of winning right now by those 10 points. If it's like three or four points, it's quite possible it goes to a second round and maybe, maybe they think they, they can get away with it. I mean, it's certainly within the rules. I mean, that's the way it's set up, but <clears throat> it's got to be close for them to even contemplate it unless they're completely insane, in which case forget about it. The point being, the thing to do now is to work as hard as you can for Sanders to make sure he has that, that type of lead.
but also to be aware that you don't get extra points for being right about something. You know, you, you know, you can feel good about it, but if you're going to put, and I, and when I say you, I'm talking about what I'm going to do. And I'm just giving an, a, a, a version of how people can behave to bring, to build upon this, to be strategic, crapping on candidates, particularly ones that are closest and most likely to become Sanders supporters sooner rather than later is unstrategic at best and uh, petty and dumb. And then I have a whole list of words for it after that. Here's an example of, of why that's the case. This is um, Future Bird on uh, Twitter. She put this up, uh, she posted this just uh, yesterday. That's my uh, Elizabeth Warren sign. It's hanging in our apartment, and I think it's really cool because all of the people in these big apartments here could see it. But, as promised, I'm going to take it down now. Uh, this is sad for me. I still like Elizabeth Warren. But listen, we've got a win. And I thought that by now Liz Warren would have a lot more support from minority voters. And I thought but by now she would be a little bit more in the lead. And that maybe she would have won over some of these stubborn moderates. But after seeing the way that Bernie's reached out to Latino voters in Nevada, I'm feeling a lot more optimistic about him being able to win. The thing is, we're all going to have to work together to make that happen. It's going to be all hands on deck. We can't let our feelings get in the way. And that goes both ways, right? That goes both ways. I've I mean, been it's, saying. It's one thing, indeed. It's one thing to go after, uh, you know, MSNBC hosts or media figures. It's another, at this point, to go too hard, particularly at candidates whom for whom their support comes from people where Bernie is number two. You want to bring those people on. You want to be strategic. 